everybody i'm uh, smaran puri and i'm working with heads of corporation uh, heads of corporation is an hr consulting firm offering strategic management solutions to startups and hr uh, smes uh, today we have with us uh, professor uh, dr jayar gupta uh, he is currently an educational advisor to all the reputed management institutes all over all over india uh, he is an eminent academician Uh, with over five decades of experience in research, consulting, uh, teaching, and administration, he's been bestowed the very famous Devang Mehta Award for the best teacher in human resource management in India. He has served as a vice vice chancellor of the only central university in the state of Chhattisgarh, and has also been the principal of SRCC. He has taught in many prominent management institutes of India. and even in abroad such as uh, malaysia and tanzania for several years he's been invited as a professor of leadership in france and institutes like i am bangalore and i am raj he has been an independent director of board in several financial sector as well as academic sectors such as bank of baroda venture capital ugc aicp ministry of corporate affairs and many more he's authored books He's published research articles in the field of human resource management. Welcome, sir. Uh, today's topic is organization leadership in the contemporary uh, environment. We will be telling us the understanding the implications of the emerging challenges in this un- uncertainty, and along with it, the changing leadership in the organization. I would like all of you to uh, keep your questions coming in uh, while the session is going on. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Smara. Good afternoon, <coughs> dear friends. Today we are passing through a time of extreme uncertainty. When the economic horizons are not clear, how much time it will be before those horizons become clear to us? All this is causing a lot of stress and anxiety. In times like these. a leadership factor in organizations becomes one of very crucial importance now it requires the environment of uncertainty and a host of difficult challenges require really a very substantial mind shift and uh, leaders working in organization have got to be looking more innovative they have to be collaborative and they have to be cultivating a compassionate leadership for their people in organizations now today in this webinar my effort will be to outline those important challenges which the organizations are today are facing and also try to understand what can be the possible strategies which employ if it's employed can really deliver good results uh broadly i'll be sharing with you the kind of challenges as i said which create the task of leaders rather important for organizations because this pandemic global pandemic is causing a lot of stress and disturbances all over so if the leadership role is to be critical what is its concept what kind of roles the leaders are supposed to be playing and how the leadership in general is understood which can deliver the goods in circumstances like this how do they function what they do how they behave actually it is the behavioral dimension of leadership which is of utmost importance in times when we are negotiating with uncertainty should they follow the command and control model 
Should they follow a method where they concentrate all the authority and power with themselves? Or they share it with their people and empower other people where the quick and correct decisions could be made? All this, what kind of, you know, attributes are required? So some of these things we'll try to understand together and we'll see what possible strategies can really take us out of this trouble, troubling period and how can the organizations not only survive but it starts thriving in the least possible time. The challenges have always been there for leaders but of a different kind. Today's challenges are actually very, very different. You know, we are, we have been talking about globalization. We have been talking about going to places and setting up our business wherever the cost is the least. But it is being suggested today that the globalization is dying a slow death. And times of regionalizations are coming. Now, we used to take so much pride in saying, you know, that distances have died with the advent of, you know, technology, with Wi-Fi everywhere, broadband everywhere, internet everywhere, distances have died, death of distances. But now we find this is not so. We used to consider JIT just in time inventory. But now we find that our supply chains have been considerably disturbed and therefore people are, have started talking about regionalization where supply chain you don't have to depend on you know those kind of things on one particular country or one particular place, one particular location but then well, there can be a kind of a buffer and JIT may not be insisted upon so much. Technology, mind-boggling, what kind of changes have taken place and, you know, they say the future is not what it has been so far. It's going to be something very different. The nature of work is going to be different. One has to imagine really how will people be working in future and to what extent they need to have, will need to have the kind of skills where they feel comfortable with the changing technology, the artificial intelligence, the idea of digitization, idea of automation. You know, you can hire people today from any part of the world and people don't have to come to the place of working in many situations. It is creating a challenge, which also, of course to some extent has always been there, challenge of managing diversity diverse workforce, people from different cultures, different regions, different belief systems, different value systems. How can they be, you know, their efforts could be coordinated in manner that they are all working towards a common purpose, towards a common objective. Now, how it can be done? Well, the role of leadership becomes very important. Producing quality things has always been a good idea. But today the organizations have been facing Another challenge, the challenge of increased quality. The consumer is not satisfied with what is good. Is not satisfied also, which is slightly better than the earlier one. It wants is still better. So this is a challenge with the leadership of today in organizations are supposed to meet. How to motivate people? How to make them feel committed, involved, engaged, these issues have always been there, but never so important as they have become today. Working from home. There are many occupations where the work from home is not a good strategy. In others, maybe 30% can work from home. In some others, maybe 70-80% can work from home. But how to establish and ensure accountability? How to ensure their motivation? what kind of needs they have started feeling recently because of this tremendously uncertain situation how to keep their motivation at a high level 
how to make them feel comfortable is a challenge a perennial one but today has become much sharper than before and last but not the least in fact perhaps it's the most important the challenge of ethical behavior doing the right things doing what should be done now new definitions will emerge now in this kind of environment as to what is the right thing to do is caring for shareholders well does that continue to be as important as it has been or you have to think of you know triple bottom line you have to think of conscious capitalism you have to think more of you know capitalism with the human heart with the human angle you have to talk about compassion and empathy more than the profits or the bottom line in terms of money how this is to be ensured what will be the kind of a text which the organizations are supposed to practice so that this survive today and thrive tomorrow on such occasions on such situations many times the short term becomes very important and the sustainability of the organization is not in focus so these are the kind of challenges many of the challenges are not really entirely new but then the focus is new what should be emphasized more today in terms of responding to these challenges what should be focused or emphasized less that is really the question now there are two profiles when we talk about leaders or managers in the organization we think in terms of two broad profiles one profile which is traditionally has been considered effective for augmenting the shareholders value in particular that is the profile of compliance managers leaders leaders who have ensured that people must employ their subordinates their followers must comply with what they say and they must follow the system try to minimize the risk avoid the risk that should become their major trait and everything every analysis in terms of quantitative logic what has gone up what has remained there what has decreased how this could be you know interpreted in terms of the final bottom line and that is the profits catching wrong to err they say to err is human but should the focus always be in identifying the deviations from the standards should the focus be always on finding out people's fault and and ensuring that they follow the procedures and systems that have been laid down strictly or something else how strictly or how liberally should the procedures be managed as i said the times are now very different challenges are some of them very very different the other profile of people i mean people just trying to put you know all the people in two two categories two profiles another profile of commitment where the motto is not violating the system but not really following the system in the sense that you continue to do what you have been doing because it has been giving you these good results idea here is to improve the system and the traits of such profile of they are a smart risk taking take a risk legitimate risk this what taking today i think risk taking has become a very important factor what risks to be should be taken in the environment like this and which should be avoided because the iti is you know lives and livelihoods both qualitative and intuitive logic intuition the sixth sense is becoming important today what should be should we always be driven by the you know this creates a kind of a paradox on the on the one hand you are talking about data and technology and everything driven by data on the other hand you are saying that well commitment profile demands are is characterized by 
the intuitive logic. What you think is going to go right, intuition is not just coming out of the blue. It's of course is based on one's accumulated experience uh, and learning. So quantitative, qualitative logic, the role of intuition is the characteristics of the commitment profile. Rather than catching people wrong, a small deviation, you catch hold of the person. But here, the idea is focusing on what behaviors have been the right behaviors on their part and managing people, their aspirations, their hopes, their pains. The idea of empathy and compassion, that is what characterizes the commitment profile. This kind of a profile, it has been suggested that builds commitment to the organization, to action and to innovation and that what perhaps is needed in terms of leadership strategies today in the prevailing environment. Now, all good managers are not good leaders. As Jim Collins suggested, demands of leadership role are different. Managers use techniques and skills to show results, whereas leaders use imagination, passion to fulfill their dreams. The idea of imagination and reimagination, reimagining things afresh with a commitment, sense of commitment and passion is what has become, you know, more important. Imagination of leaders generally goes beyond the personal and the present, as we'll see as uh, later on, that, you know, beyond the personal and present, what should we live for? Whom should we live for? Who are we? Often the questions which are asked are, are the uppermost in the mind are, well, if I do like this, what is going to be the ROI? ROI, return on investment. La, today, I think it has ROI remains important, but what has become more important is who am I? What kind of a person I am? What beliefs do I hold? What values do I practice and preach? Do I think about myself, my team, my group, my unit? Or I also think of the others and the future and act accordingly. So these are the concerns of leaders, which may be somewhat different from the concerns of managers. Now, let me put before you two or three perspectives on leadership. This is what the people have suggested, the people have been influenced by. You know, see the leadership is essentially, as we know, is a process of interpersonal influence. One person influences the other's mind. It's a timeless question though, what is that? Why it is that one person inspires the others? Others are not able to do. Many, many people are not doing, uh, able to do that, but some people are able to inspire. Why? What is that force? It's a timeless question. The answer, as I said, is not very definite, but will possibly those who are able to get us out of the difficult situations, those who are able to navigate through adversity uh, to the advantage of others in the organization, they are considered worthy of uh, being obeyed. So one perspective here before you is, friends, you do not lead by hitting people over the head. Asking people to do and ensuring that they do it the way you want it is not really no, it, you are using the influence. But this is not what leadership is. It's usually called a salt, not leadership. Leadership is persuasion. Now, leading by consent in times like these, one has to be, in order, in order to be a good leader, one has to you know, lead by obtaining other consent, persuasion. It has to do something with the, the, the element of emotion, the feeling, the heart, not so much the reason, but much with the emotion and feeling. So persuasion and conciliation. In organizations, people will differ. In times like these, they will differ more. 
what should be the correct way of really doing things. But then conciliation is the leadership approach. People oppose the leaders many times, they don't agree with them and with their ways of you know, introducing the various ways of thinking and doing because they are not aware. They are ignorant. They don't have that much knowledge. So what is the leadership role then? What is leadership? Leader is, leadership is education. And patience, leaders are not excited by the just the joys of the moment. They are patient. They take a long-term view, of course, not ignoring the short-term or medium-term concerns. Well, it's a very, I think, it's a comprehensive description in terms of one particular leadership perspective. Now, present times is characterized by a sense of fear. Uncertainty is always caused that fear. And then also the hope that, well, eventually everything is going to be right. The organization will start functioning well. We'll be all, you know, making money and taking care of our, our lives better. So hope, fear and hope. Napoleon had this to say, the only way to lead people is to show them a future. A leader is a dealer in hope. A leader is a dealer in hope. This the present situation causes a lot of fear, anxiety and a feeling of being unsafe, insecurity. But a leader is the one who creates hope in the minds of people and not despair, not despair. So leader is a dealer in hope. Now, another way of looking at this, the leader is one who commits people to action, who converts followers into leaders and who may convert leaders into agents of change. Change is the key word in leadership. Introducing change, managing change. Today's changes, many of them have not been you know, introduced by leaders. The source is debatable. There's a lot which is unknowable, unknown and unknowable. Leaders are idealizers. They idealize what should be done. They dream, they idealize. But good leaders are also those who actualize, who implement. Merely dreaming is not enough. Dreaming dreams which are implementable and leader is an instrument of change. So these perspectives are overlapping in a way and will guide our further discussion on this topic. Attitudes of leaders are characterized by certain important things. No, leaders, as we all know, they talk about vision. Their attitude towards goal is personal and active. My vision. They say the purpose I'm going to follow and I want my followers to do the same. So their attitude towards goal is personal. And their conception of work relates to new thinking, innovation, creativity, new ideas, which are very much needed today. That's why I said in the beginning that leadership is a very critical factor today, more critical than what it has been at any other time, which have been less demanding than today. Relations with others, their attitude are, attitudes are and have to be driven by empathy feeling to feel how others feel and intuitive unconventional not based on established traditions but something which is different their relations with us others as i said are based on you know empathy and intuition and they focus more on softer aspects of organizations. 
skill of the people they believe in reskilling people upgrading their skills including their own and their style is the one which is very supportive another element is the leaders are concerned more with the, is the idea of culture the shared values what values are shared by people what values are their values is they are disseminated in the organization and established a culture so that is what leadership attitudes are like now they have to play their roles in within the organization and outside the organization essentially they set a direction for the organization and they manage and initiate change now what do leaders do and what they are supposed to do in situations like this on certain times as i have been repeatedly saying well there are two important things just two things which encompass almost all the functions of leaders one is creating an agent of change the kind of challenges which have emerged what kind of changes should be made in the organization in the methods of working in the methods of procurement supply chain <coughs> technology what kind of technology should be used how people should be reskilled and how fast what should the speed and scale so you have to create an agenda for change of course this agenda for change is a vision of what can and should be i think this is this is uh, this deserves your attention you know there are things which are necessary to be done and a managerial focus usually on those things what is necessary is seen as necessary by them to do so what is necessary and what is desirable what should be done and when we talk about desirability we talk about the people other than yourself for the organization for the country what should be done what is desirable what is ethical what is right and then great leaders it has been found that they don't stop there and they say well i want to do what is not merely necessary what is not merely desirable but also something which is possible possible no wonder it is said that leadership is the art of the impossible something which is impossible apparently for many but possible for the leader his own mind and heart is sure it can be achieved of course in the long run a vision that takes into account the legitimate long term interests of the parties involved leader's vision <coughs> is his can be his own but is based on what people really want what kind of change they want leaders also have to lay down and have to make it a part of their agenda a strategy for achieving that vision what kind of behavioral changes what kind of patterns of behaviors are to be changed if these kind of things are to be achieved and this strategy also must take into account all the relevant organizational and environment forces this so leadership is essentially as we know is situational leader is an important part the other important part as we know are the follower the subordinates the employees and then there are conditions which can be facilitating conditions are the conditions which can be creating problems so what kind of style eventually will emerge or will be used by the leader and will be appropriate depends on these three factors situations being very important so creating an agenda for change is one task and obviously the second was simple building a strong implementation network merely creating an agenda is not enough but that should be implementable and that should be implemented and for that good leadership will always create a supporting relationship with the key sources of power with your people with your core group with your team and this relationship must be strong enough to elicit cooperation and of course compliance 
wherever necessary in compliance of the leader's views. A highly motivated crore group for turnaround situations anywhere a highly motivated crore group of people will be required and this core group needs to be committed to make the vision a reality. So two tasks, one creating an agent of a change and the other building a strong implementation network. Now, uh, what kind of leadership behaviors, what kind of leadership strategic behaviors or strategies will be become necessary for taking care of, for taking care uh, of these challenges which have, I have outlined earlier. Of course, if you want certain things to get done, well, you must be able to get the attention of the people that you are leading. Followers must give their attention to you. You must be able to pull people towards yourself. Good leaders, great leaders, transformation leaders are able to pull people towards themselves. This is called identification. The followers identify with the leader. They will not identify if they do not see the vision being really compellingly attractive and beneficial to them. The vision has got to be brought in very sharp focus by the leader so that it pulls people towards the, towards the leader. Towards the leader. It's not pushing people towards work, which is the correct strategy today to meet these challenges, but pulling people towards yourself so that you know the way you see things become their own ways are also seeing the same things. So meaning of this vision. What does it mean? Has got to be communicated, communicated well. Leaders are good leaders are great communicators. Communication, as we know, is transfer of understanding and not their words. Leaders are very good listeners. They listen. I I recall a, a parable on leadership at the moment, and I'm, I'm happy to share it with you. See, sound of silence. Now, what kind of communication ability, that ability to receive communication and understand is becoming necessary for the leaders. Uh, there was a, 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 a disciple of a great teacher who was trained by him. And one day he asked him to go to a nearby large forest and hear all these sounds that, that could be that he would hear. The young man, his disciple, went to the forest, roamed around, it's a huge, vast forest. He couldn't hear much sounds except, you know, birds chirping and so on. So he, after a couple of days, he came back to his teacher. He said, sir, I'm here. He said, what sounds did you hear? He said, I've heard the birds chirping. The winds, you know, Bell purring and following, the leaves rustling. These are the kind of, you know, bees buzzing. These are the counts, kinds of voice only, voice sounds only that I could hear. Nothing much there. Well, he said, okay, these are the sounds there, but you can can you go again and try to see, try to hear. Maybe there are there's something more. This time the fellow is perplexed. He goes, of course, he must obey the teacher. So he goes there, looks around. He spends this time a much longer period and while he is meditating under a tree one day, he thinks something he is hearing. Very happy. Comes back to the teacher. He said, look, I have heard the sound that I, I could hear. Tell me, he said, tell me what have you heard? He said, I've heard the sounds of birds singing, the cricket chirping, the bees buzzing, the, the leaves rustling because the wind is blowing. These are the sounds that I have heard, but I have also heard some more sounds. He said, what is that? I have heard the sound of, he said, I have heard the sound of sun warming the earth. I have heard the sound of grass drinking the morning dew. I have heard these sounds. Well, the teacher said, okay, good. You have heard the unheard. You have heard what has not been said. And that should be the character of a good leader 
if somebody is in pain, somebody is in trouble, or somebody wants some help from the chief leader, and the employee, the subordinate, the follower comes to him, and just by looking at his face, I mean, talking, maybe talking a little, he understands fully, you know, what is really troubling him. This is called empathy. Feeling the way the other person feels, he has not said anything. And yet you have been able to make out, this is, in other words, it is also known as social sensitivity. How sensitive you are. And then how flexible you are. How will you take an action to take care of that kind of a situation? So meaning through communication. You create a meaning in the mind of the person, but this is what the vision means. This is, this is why we should do this. Emotional appeals to value. The reason and emotion, logic and something which is non-logical, both are important. Life is not all logic, life is not all reason, and life is also not all emotion. So balance, but then when you are persuading, persuasion is leadership, then you're using emotional appeals. So good leaders really make uh, appeal to, to the emotions of people, feelings of the people, so that they can get things done in the right direction. Self-sacrifices is another leadership behavior which is very important in you know, influencing the people the way they want them to be influenced. You know, if you are looking only for your own benefit, well, it does not create a sense of trust it, a, a sense of respect for you. The people who sacrifice their personal interests to safeguard the interests of the others, their employees, their followers, they are the ones who are more effective. Self-sacrifice. You know, I, I, I uh, am reminded of you know a, a very good work which Hermann has that Hermann has that the German Nobel laureate wrote by the name Siddharth, and he talks about a monk. Mom goes to seek a little help from somebody and he says, well, why should I help you? What is that you know and what is that you can do for us? Well, he says, look, I can, I know only three things. I can think, I can fast and I can wait. Fasting is sacrificing for somebody else for a good cause. I can think, I can look into the future know something what is going to happen or what might happen no good leaders are really prophetic they are bold they are prophetic says i can think the long term i can think the short term i can think the medium term and i can fast i can once i'm convinced about the cause i'm willing to sacrifice my personal interest for the larger interest of the people and I can wait. Patience. I don't want, you know, I'm not driven by the joys of the moment. I can relax. I am calm, but I'm optimistic. Things will happen in a better way. So good leaders are calm. Good leaders are optimistic. And good leaders are sacrificing. You know, when the Chrysler Motor Company in America was in great trouble, and I, Coca was the chairperson, he asked people to forego a large part of their salary every month. And he said, look, I'm also taking this much reduced salary. His salary reduction was very, very high, as com much higher as compared to the, you know, what he asked the followers to forego. But then he called it what? Equality of sacrifice. Your sacrifice and my sacrifice. It might appear, my sacrifice might appear to be much, much bigger than yours, but I call it equality. And once he did this, well, those labor troubles that he was facing were over because they could, they started respecting him for the kind of sacrifice that he was willing to make for the sake of the survival and growth of the organization. So self-sacrifice, I think, is the centerpiece of good leadership. Trust through positioning. How do you project yourself? How do you position yourself? Good leaders create trust. Without trust, nothing happens. If, you know, 
there is a difference between what you say and what you do it cannot create trust at all so they ensure that what they say they also do empowering organizational participants empowering them making others more powerful it doesn't mean abdicating your responsibilities but making them you know giving them a sense of importance sense of significance and in, in today's times granting autonomy to people empowering them in various ways we'll see that in the next slide i'm going to show what are the various ways in the good leaders empower their followers empowering organizational participants <clears throat> self regard to positive attitudes while leaders have a healthy respect for themselves and this healthy respect for themselves also comes from their learning their confidence and optimism as i said good leaders empower people by providing direction why ideals vision and higher purpose you know victor frankel in his book uh, search man search for meaning said uh, an individual lives at three levels will to pleasure will to power and will to meaning what's the meaning of life what is the meaning why i'm doing this why should i do what my leader says i should do what is the purpose higher purpose is you no know, more than you no know, living for somebody else not for yourself for a higher purpose beyond yourself going beyond yourself so they set examples and that is how they empower other people with pragmatic ideas they stimulate the followers they reward them in terms of you know, leaders reward more not not so much in terms of those increments uh, salary increments and so on they they do that but then informal personal recognition is the hallmark of great leaders in our nations by inspiring them to do more than they thought they could do by enhancing their competence giving giving them a sense of significance giving them a sense that they belong to the same community the same team same organization and therefore they must go beyond the limitations self imposed limitations and finally they empower people or give them a sense of power by looking at their new needs and old needs the kind of needs that they really experience today you know in times of a tremendous amount of fake news you know, and things which are not really real but are suggested there's a need for truth and transparency leaders by becoming transparent and expecting others to be transparent they create a sense of power in people stability self esteem growth and giving them a purpose a meaning of their actions these are the processes as a function of leadership now coming to the qualities of uh, leadership hundreds of qualities have been mentioned that the leader should have but today in times that we are experiencing times that we are experiencing now what kind of qualities become you know more important to us you know <coughs> communication our communication uh, the point has been covered there awakening one's hidden will i think is a good good proposition to think about that people really want to go beyond themselves and they want to live for a higher purpose the purpose other than meeting their own needs but then this will to do good to others is hidden good to organization is hidden to do something which is beneficial in the wrong line is hidden the leaders have to awaken that will through their effective communication and as i said communication does not mean you addressing the people but also listening to their feelings with your heart empathy and compassion compassion is really doing something is not merely you know empathy may be feeling the way you feel that they feel but compassion is going you know 
beyond that and really taking an action some action organizationally to to be with that kind of a feeling and to help them in their actions courage courage and fear courage is what grace under pressure if you can maintain your grace leaders as i said are very com- calm composed compassionate even in the periods of stress and strain and distress the courage comes from of course their experience their learning their ethics their values integrity i mentioned in the, my first slide you know see the challenge of ethical behavior often there is a question of ends and means can ends and means be separated people say all is well that ends well well uh, we want to improve the organization we want to navigate through this uncertainty anyhow at any cost now whatever be the means all is well that ends well this is a kind of a war we are fighting so everything is okay in love and war now can we say that is a question actually one has to ponder where the ends are more important and where the ends are as important as the means needs to be understood and practiced by the leaders at large the purpose today is the time when the leaders have to draw their attention the attention of their employees their subordinates they have to pull them towards themselves by telling them what is the higher purpose the purpose of the organization short term immediate goals are important but then what can unite them what can bring them together is the higher purpose for which the organization stands no the environment is important for us the shareholders well is important for us people bottom line the people the planet the profit all the three are important but then this has got to be communicated by the leaders and this can certainly bring them together the training today i think uh, uh, because of the very fast skill of solutions the speed of reskilling people and the skill of reskilling people has become very important this technology is changing every day and many people in the organizations are not really aware of the new technology they are not good at using it and therefore training becomes a very important task for all good leaders today understanding self and others who am i is very important what i am going to do how i operate all these important but who am i deals with the question of my value system what is my value? am i honest am i greedy am i hard working am i you know empathetic am i compassionate who am i these questions become very important and that improve the quality of leadership success of course does depend eventually on the issues and the facilitating conditions involved but the leadership role the leadership personality the leadership you know what kind of a person the leader is this is very very important now jim collins in his book good to great talked about level 5 executives here today i think we need this kind of leadership level 5 the jim collins call shall in terms of persons who are humble who practice humility but at the same time they are very very firm so firmness with humility i think is important today and uh, uh, you know things which i have suggested about sacrifice and so on level 5 leaders they are not driven by their personal ego needs but they look at the larger goal of building a great organization and it is not their self interest which really motivates them and through which they motivate try to motivate or bring together the employees but it is a sense of spirit of sacrifice which really makes them what they are a very interesting concept was mentioned the window and the mirror by jim collins in the book put to great is at level 5 the person who practices humility and firmness looks out of the window to a portion credit when things go very well you succeed then you look out of the window who are the people who help me and give them credit 
Of course, when you fail, you go to the mirror and find out, you know, he is the person, I'm the person responsible for, for it. At the same time, they look in the mirror to a portion of responsibility, never believing bad luck when things go poorly. So it is not the luck of the people. If people are not there, they, they are not to be given credit, or they don't really don't think they, they are they are they have been instrumental, then you can say the luck and not yourself even then. So that is what the uh, kind of leadership we need today. And finally, you now I show you here an advertisement that I had seen many years ago by recruiting people, appointments by a multinational firm operating in India. And uh, advertisement said that we have come across the following types of managers. First was the peacock. Looks great. Wears the right clothes, but can't fly to save his life. Never gets up the ground. Parrot, no opinion of his own. Repeats everything his master says. The vulture. Let someone else do the dirty work and then fly it in for lunch, an ugly bird. Which brings us to the eagle, an amazing bird, flies high, as high as he wants to, and no one messes with him. Great vision, tremendous energy and intellect. I think this is the kind of leader that today's organizations also want. Thank you very much, sir, for giving such a interesting session. Thank you. That's been my pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. It's only the DSB which has been with you, it seems. Yes. Most of them, most of them are DSB, is it? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you.